Dr. Bowen back here with you to do a quick rundown comparison between group, group A and group B beta hemolytic strep. You will be asked about this on boards. So if you haven't gone through the videos that I put up on group A and group B beta hemolytic strep, which are packed with very high yield information, go through the stories that I gave to solidify that. Uh, I would recommend that you do that. Now we're going to do a quick comparison, again, reinforcing this very high yield information. I strongly recommend that you burn this into your memory and know this cold for your boards. All right, so by definition, both group A and group B strep are catalase negative. How do you know that? Well, when you're dealing with gram-positive cocci, if they're catalase positive, it's always staph. If they're catalase negative, it's always strep, okay? By definition, they're also both beta hemolytic. Uh, so that's pretty obvious, right? Group A and group B are both the beta hemolytic strep. Uh, so you'll see a full zone of clearing around the colonies on sheep blood agar. Sheep blood agar is a very important test to distinguish between the different variants of streptococci. All right, so far they're the same, right? Now let's get into the differences. Very important, uh, most important thing that you do when you've got beta hemolytic strep is to do a bacitracin sensitivity test. The bacitracin sensitivity test is done with beta hemolytic strep. And the mnemonic is B bras. B for bacitracin, BR for group B resistant, AS for group A sensitive. Now the factors. PYR is positive in group A strep. Remember pyogenes pyromaniac is PYR positive. Group B strep is PYR negative. Well what's positive in group B strep? Group B strep is camp positive and hippurate positive. Remember our baby on the moon with group B strep who is camping out with the hippo toy? Go back to the video and watch it. It'll burn it into your memory. Camp positive and hippurate positive. You do not need to know what those mean as far as disease, but what you do need to know is what camp will look like. So camp, what you do is you plate Staph aureus, and then you plate your beta hemolytic strep in question. You don't know what group it is. Uh, and what you'll see uh, is uh, if you're dealing with group B strep is you'll see an arrowhead of enhanced hemolysis and this is camp positive that's what it means uh, it doesn't mean cyclic AMP uh, so group B strep will give you uh, an, an arrowhead and if you don't see that arrowhead it's camp negative and then you know you're dealing with group A strep. Hippurate hydrolysis not very high yield for boards all you do is you add in a reagent to your bacteria if it turns positive if it turns purple it's positive uh, if it doesn't it's negative what you do need to know for boards is simply that group B strep is hippurate positive remember your baby with the hippo toy okay moving on to the virulence factors group A strep by far and away the most important virulence factor is M protein why because when you have a response an immune response to M protein that can attack your own tissue and that is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and that is the etiology of rheumatic heart disease. It's also got a hyaluronic acid capsule. Important that you know that strep pyogenes is an encapsulated bacteria and in particular that it's made out of hyaluronic acid. Uh, streptokinase is a component of strep pyogenes that we use clinically to break down clots. That's what it does. Uh, we don't use it so much anymore, uh, but we used to use it a lot for people with strokes. Now we use things like TPA and alteplase and retoplase, uh, but streptokinase breaks down clots. And we don't use it so much anymore because you can get an immune reaction to it and hypersensitivity and all that. And we try to avoid that. DNAs kills neutrophils, and it is used as Dornase alpha, and that is important, uh, an important part of therapy for patients with cystic fibrosis. It thins out their lung secretions. So you may see Dornase alpha uh, when you do your pulmonology. That's what it is. Group B strep, hemolysin, uh, that is uh, something that breaks down red blood cells that allows group B strep to be beta hemolytic. It's also encapsulated, but this, this capsule is made of polysaccharide, just like your strep pneumo. There are two important toxins for group A strep. Uh, streptolysin O is analogous to hemolysin. Uh, but the important toxins, uh, the important toxin with group A strep is the pyrogenic toxin, in particular SPA and SPC. Those are both super antigens, and super antigens cause toxic shock like syndrome. Uh, diseases from group A strep, strep pharyngitis, that's strep throat, you'll see uh, uh, mild fever, uh, sore throat, and tonsillar exudates. 
Uh, impetigo is honey-crusted lesions, can also be caused by staph. Skin infections, cellulitis and erysipelas, uh, they are, will both give warmth and tenderness, but cellulitis will have indistinct margins. Erysipelas will have very abrupt margins. Scarlet fever, remember the, the fever and the sandpaper-like rash is caused by group A strep. Uh, group B strep is infection in the neonate. Neonatal meningitis, it's the number one cause. Neonatal sepsis, it's the number one cause. And then it's a big cause of neonatal pneumonia. There are no sequelae for group B strep, but for group A strep, it can cause rheumatic fever. That's a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, and that's due to the M protein. This usually happens within weeks, and it's only caused from pharyngitis. So just remember, rheumatic fever can cause heart disease. Heart, you only have one, and so there's only one cause, pharyngitis. Postreptococcal glomerulonephritis is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction due to immune complexes depositing in the glomerulus, causes the Coca-Cola colored urine, the puffiness around the face. It's fairly self-limited. It comes on within weeks after a strep infection. And remember, you have two kidneys, so there's two causes, either pharyngitis or impetigo, or it can be also caused by one of the other skin infections as well. Often you'll see this in childhood. The treatment for group A strep is either a macrolide or a beta-lactam. Either are, uh, either are fine to use. For group B strep, we use ampicillin, add it to the standard treatment, but what you'll find is that the standard treatment for neonatal meningitis, neonatal pneumonia, neonatal sepsis uh, is always going to have ampicillin on it because listeria is another cause of these things, and ampicillin is very good uh, against listeria. For prevention, we test the mother at 35 weeks routinely. We swab her vagina, rectum, and perineum. We, we culture it, and if she is group B strep positive, as many women are normally as part of their normal flora, then when she's in labor, we give her penicillin G as a prophylaxis, and that drastically reduces the risk of her passing on group B strep to her baby. Okay, and that's it. So next, we'll move on to the gamma hemolytic strep.